So Final Cut Pro 11 is finally here. And in this video, I'm going to go over two massive new features as well as some other important new features. If you're already a Final Cut Pro user, you'll be pleased to know that Final Cut Pro 11 is not a subscription and it's not a new app that you have to purchase. That's right, if you currently own Final Cut Pro for Mac, all you need to do is update the app. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brad and we do fun Final Cut Pro things here. So let's take a look at the first and most exciting new feature in my opinion, the magnetic mask. This is essentially Apple's native rotoscoping tool for Final Cut Pro. There are a couple of ways to apply it. First, I'll hold down Option and duplicate this clip, and then I'll head over to the Effects Browser, scroll down to the Masks and Keying category, and there is the new Magnetic Mask effect. If I click and drag the effect onto the Viewer window, you'll see how Final Cut Pro uses AI to identify objects and people. I can let go of the mouse, and the Magnetic Mask has done a pretty good job of selecting this person. I can click to add areas to the mask and refine it, and we can hold down the Option key and click to remove areas of the mask. Then I'll hit Analyze, and Final Cut Pro will track this mask forwards and backwards in my shot. This is it happening in real time, by the way, and I'm on an M1 Max MacBook Pro. It's really fast. Now, if I hide the layer below using the shortcut V, you can see that we have isolated this person in the clip up top, and the magnetic mask has done a great job. The cool thing is, you can also use the magnetic mask on other built-in effects like blur, bad TV, or color tools like the color wheels effect. I've added a color wheels adjustment to this shot, and by clicking on the drop-down arrow over here, I can add a magnetic mask. I can select my subject and track the mask, and once it's done, I can then make corrections and adjustments that are only applied to the mask. There are so many great use cases for the new magnetic mask, and I'm working on a dedicated magnetic mask video for you, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. The second big feature in this update is one that I know many people have been waiting for, and it's built-in auto captions. In true Apple fashion, it's really easy to use. You simply select all the dialogue you want to transcribe to captions, and then you can click on the magic wand icon over here and select transcribe to captions. There's also a handy little shortcut for it, command shift C. You can also access it through the edit menu. There it is right there. And you can even right click on those clips and select transcribe to captions. Now this is Final Cut Pro transcribing my selection in real time, and it's roughly four minutes long. It's amazing how quickly it creates the captions. Let's play a short section back to see how accurate it is. But there is one very important thing you should do to make sure this works across all of your different projects and libraries. You need to create your own roles template. That's pretty great in my opinion. Now, you may or may not know that captions are fairly limited in terms of the style. They are not as customizable as traditional titles, but there is a way to convert these captions to titles using a free third-party tool, and I'll go into that in more detail in my dedicated auto captions video, which is also coming soon. Another reason to subscribe. There are a couple of smaller, but still really useful features, including a few new shortcuts in Final Cut Pro 11. If you've seen my 100 Final Cut Pro shortcuts video, you'll know that you can zoom your timeline to fit by hitting Shift Z, which basically fits your entire edit in the timeline window horizontally. We now have the ability to squeeze the track height to fit vertically on your timeline, and that shortcut is Option Shift Z. So if you have a lot of layers on your timeline, this is a great way to be able to see all of your connected clips really quickly. Speaking of connected clips, if you often have a lot of clips stacked up on top of each other in your timeline, you might be used to clicking and dragging to try and change the order of those clips. And I know for me, it was sometimes frustrating because the clip might move a few frames to the left or right and snap to something else. You could of course hold down the shift key to maintain the clip's relative position, but sometimes it was also a struggle to put the clip between two specific layers. Well now, we have a shortcut that allows you to change the stack order of the clips. By holding down the Option key and using the up and down arrows, you can change the order of your clips. This works on individual clips as well as multiple clips. We now also have the ability to hide clips in the browser window. If you ever create multicam clips, you might feel like your browser gets quite messy because you select all of the clips to create a multicam clip, and once the multicam clip has been created, you have the original clips and the multicam clips in your browser. But now, in Final Cut Pro 11, when you right click on clips and select new multicam clip, you have a new checkbox here called hide original clips. With that selected, I'll hit OK. And once my multicam clip has been created, those original clips disappear from my browser window. Now the clips aren't gone, they're still in your project. And you can head over to this view menu and then check the show hidden clips box to see them again. You are also able to right click on any other clip and choose to hide or unhide that clip. 
And this is great because it allows me to keep my browser window neat and tidy. There are also two new reframing effects. In your effects browser, you'll notice a new category called reframe. So let's have a look at the callout effect first. I'll drag the callout effect onto this clip and I can use the on-screen control to select my subject. Let's say this cow. I can then use these on-screen controls to adjust the size of the callout and the position. In the plugin parameters, I can choose to have this effect bold in or bold out. I can also adjust the roundness of the corners and add an outline by increasing the opacity here. I'll adjust the width and then color pick a color from my scene, which I can adjust slightly. And then I'll do the same for the background full color. And just like that, I've created a really nice little callout effect. This obviously builds in from the beginning of the clip and builds out at the end of the clip. And I can adjust the timing of this effect by holding down option and clicking and dragging to create a copy of the clip. And then I can trim the start and end of the top clip and I'll select the bottom clip and remove the callout effect. This is what that looks like. Then in the reframe category, we also have a new picture in picture effect. Once applied to the clip, you have the option to build in or build out. Under the from menu, you have a few options here and you can choose where the picture in picture effect animates to. There are a ton of other parameters here like move style, roundness, outline, etc. And it allows you to customize this effect the way you like. You can also apply this effect to multiple layers to create something that looks like this. Final Cut Pro 11 allows you to do spatial video editing for the Apple Vision Pro. Unfortunately, I don't have an Apple Vision Pro, but if I did, I'd be able to import the stereoscopic video captured by the Apple Vision Pro or the iPhone 15 Pro and later. I would then be able to create a new project and under the video format, I'd be able to change it to spatial or stereo 3D. Now, you can't see the 3D or depth effect on a Mac display, but there are ways to preview that depth. Let me show you what I mean. I'll just add a title into the spatial project. And if I head over to this view dropdown menu, I can scroll down to show stereoscopic as, and right now it's set to right eye, but I can also set it to both eyes to see the left and right eyes at the same time. But what's really cool is you can set it to anaglyph, and this will give me an idea of the depth using red and green colors. Now you won't see the red and green colors on this title just yet because it's simply a flat title, so with the title selected, I can head over to my inspector window and under the new stereoscopic section, I can adjust the convergence. The further apart the red and green colors are, the closer that title will appear in the frame when I'm viewing it in 3D. When you're ready to share your edit, you can head over to the share menu over here and there's a new Apple Vision Pro export preset. So I'll click on that and under the settings tab, you'll see we have all of the Apple Vision Pro settings that we can adjust. But the cool thing is under this action menu, instead of hitting save only, you can choose to add to photos. That will sync with the photos app on your Apple Vision Pro. And then you can immediately start watching the video on your Apple Vision Pro. I'm really excited about these new features and I'm even more excited about the fact that Apple's continuing to develop Final Cut Pro. The fact that we've jumped from 10 to 11, as well as the integration of these long awaited features, signals to me that Final Cut Pro is not dead like some people think. It seems to me like Apple has a roadmap for Final Cut Pro and the switch to Final Cut Pro 11 is the beginning of a new and exciting era for Final Cut Pro. I often get comments about how Final Cut Pro doesn't have this or that when compared to DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. And if those features are a deal breaker for you, then it's likely that Final Cut Pro is not the right app for your needs. Are there more features that we'd like? Of course, of course there are. I'd love to see an audio rolls mixer, more keyframe options like easing or a keyframe editor like we see in motion. I think there will always be new features we'd like to see in Final Cut Pro, especially as other competing apps develop new features as well. But this is one of the biggest updates in a long time and I'm here for it. If you're thinking of updating to Final Cut Pro 11, then you have to watch this video next to make sure that you take all the necessary steps before updating so that you don't lose any work and that you can roll back to a previous version if you need to.